Hello guys. So today we're going to talk about uh, GitHub Copilot, which is an AI that gives you real-time suggestions to your code as you write. So I use it inside VS Code as an extension and I get uh, automatic uh, suggestions in all my files. So I want to talk about it because uh, I have met some people who have said they have tried Copilot and they haven't found it uh, useful in their day-to-day -day coding. And I always wonder because I've used this for a couple of months and I found it to be extremely helpful. So I rarely write code from scratch anymore. Uh, most of the suggestions that it gives me are correct and I just have to change a few things sometimes. So I want to highlight briefly a few of the methods I use to make sure that uh, Copilot is as helpful as it can be when I'm writing code. So one of the most effective ways to use Copilot is uh, how you name your files. So for example, if I were to say create a new file here and I call it something like uh, index.js. So if uh, I start typing say export keyword, so Copilot uh, doesn't give me suggestions uh, most of the time. There's no way for Copilot to generate context for this file. So how do I assist uh, Copilot in uh, knowing exactly what I want to write for this file? So let's try this again. Let's create a new file and call it something else. Let's call it something like uh, so slugify.js. So to slugify is to generate computer readable uh, text from a string. So it's useful for things like generating URLs. So if you look at this file, then you know that it will export a function that does just this. So let's start typing and see if copilot will help us in auto completing this file so we just do export default function and see what it auto completes and there it is it's almost like it has read my mind and has known that i want to implement a function called slugify in this file so let's accept this suggestion so let's go ahead and test this uh, function here so you can say uh, the text we want to slugify is uh, something like hello world. And then we can call our function on that text and just see what it outputs. So inside our terminal, we can run this. So src slugify.js. And you can see that it has uh, generated a URL friendly text. So, but it's not always this easy. So some text always has special characters like uh, ands and, and uh, percentages and dollar signs and hashes. So you want to be able to split this uh, correctly to generate uh, the correct slugify text here but our function currently if we run it with the current implementation you can see that uh, the text is not url friendly anymore so there's a lot of uh, that text that we need to remove so let's see if we can update our function to generate the correct uh, snippet here so check this out so if we remove the generated body here and maybe swipe out the title with something like text so we assume text is longer than a title right so text is a more general uh, thing so text can be a title can be a name can be anything so let's see if we change the variable how copilot will behave so check this out we are now getting a more extensive suggestion here so let me close the terminal so that we can see it so let's trigger it again so if we accept this uh, suggestion we are now seeing a more extensive uh, suggestion from copilot we are now getting it can it can replace all the spaces with a dash and all non word characters are removed and multiple dashes are replaced with single dashes and uh, trims the start uh, the dash from the start it's like it has taken care of all the edge cases so let's try to run this and see how it works and there it is the text is now much cleaner so that's why i'm really emphasizing on how you name uh, your functions how you name your variables copilot will behave radically different according to how you structure your your code and we can try to replicate this uh, with something else. Let's say we have another utility called um, capitalize. Uh, dot, uh, let's make it a TypeScript. So again, we just start with export default uh, function capitalize. So you can see it has auto suggested that. Let's just accept everything. Ah, so this is interesting. It has done uh, the same thing we did with the slugify. Uh, the code uh, looks reasonable. It uh, takes the first character and capitalizes it and then appends the rest of the characters to it. So how does it work so let's try it here so text is equals to something like um, we can say maybe john and then we can uh, log it so let's see how it looks so ban run src capitalize the typescript uh, so let's give it a lowercase john to see how it works so a lowercase john should uh, capitalize the j in john but again this does not work in a lot of edge cases so what if we want to make this function specific to only capitalize uh, names 
else. So for example, if you are called something like John Doe, it will capitalize your full name instead of uh, just the J in John. So again, the naming is important here. So let's go with the first trick that we are using, and that is uh, switching the uh, arguments for the function a bit. So instead of uh, referring to this as a string, we can say it's uh, a full name. So if we remove this and uh, try to get a suggestion, you now get a different function. So this now uh, takes in context that you're trying to capitalize a full name which contains multiple names. So if we run this on John Doe, we'll now get the first letter of John capitalized and the first letter of D capitalized. So this is the correct uh, function. So again, naming your function and function arguments is extremely critical. So the same applies uh, to say React components. So if I were to create a new file here and call it uh, a counter dot uh, tsx so we assume i want to write a counter component so if i try to export a default uh, function it will know that uh, this is a counter so let's try to see what it suggests ah it knows that this is a component suggests the correct dom nodes but uh, doesn't implement the functionality really so let's try uh, to give it some hints so for example we want uh, to store the state so we can import uh, the correct uh, variables for this so we need uh, use state from react to be able to do this so let's press enter and see ah so it has generated the count and set count functions and then also need the functions to handle incrementing and uh, decrementing so let's try to add let's just say handle and see how it works ah so there's a handle increment that should uh, add one to the count state variable and handle decrement that should uh, reduce the count by one so this here needs uh, to change because uh, you want to get the values uh, from the state variable so if we delete this so call pilot will know that you want to print the count and it should also add the two buttons that are handling the increment and decrement functions so we didn't have to type a lot we just had to give it some hints on what we want and uh, just like that we have a counter component and this is also very interesting if you were to say name this function something like uh, counter tailwind right so it's like uh, we are hinting to copilot that this is a counter function that is using elements that are using tailwind uh, class names so let's see if uh, copilot will take the hint so if we remove uh, this piece of code here let's see what copilot will generate for us like that and then we press tab and look at it we are getting the tailwind class names here the flex and the font bold and the button classes the backgrounds so copilot can really take a hint if you know what you want to tell it to do which is just mind blowing so lastly i want to take uh, a brief look into another very important aspect of copilot and that is uh, proper comments so let's uh, create a new file here let's call it something like um let's say it's a cli utility so something like uh download images dot uh, let's make it a javascript file so again the first hint you have told copilot here is that this is a cli utility that downloads images so it doesn't know what images how to download them and where to store them so we need to provide hints so let's write some comments that uh, provide those hints so let's say we want to download a uh, five random images from unsplash api and uh, store them uh, images old and we can say we'll uh, use um, let's say node uh, page to download uh, the images we can say that's enough hints so let's try to trigger copilot to do this for us so we can start by hinting the import so it's going to import the fetch from node fetch api uh -huh. ah, it, uh -huh, it needs the fs api from the file system it also needs the path api let's just accept everything so here's the function being implemented so let's see what it does so let's accept this so it uses the fetch api yes calls the unsplash random endpoint uh, does the buffer stuff and uh, writes the files and everything so let's see the rest of the code ah so this is the for loop that goes through uh, five times and then calls uh, the download images function ah so let's accept this the way it is and just see if uh, it correctly runs so let's go to a terminal and try to run it so ban run so it's at src cli download images ah interesting the code doesn't work on a case here, it looks like uh, the images directory does not exist. So there's a bug here. So let's try to use Copilot to fix it. So we need to create the images directory first uh, before we download the images to it. So let's add some code here. Let's give it another hint. Check if image folder exists. You can see that Copilot even knows what I want to do. So there, checks if the images directory exists like that. So this code does it. If it doesn't exist, it creates the images directory. So does this fix our bug? Let's try to rerun it. 
so clear and then run the file interesting the images have been downloaded so if we look at our sidebar here let's look for the images directory here it is and you can see that uh, ah, here are five random images we haven't written a single line of code uh, by ourselves copilot has uh, generated all of this for us so and just like that i think uh, that pretty much covers it so those are the three key principles i use when using copilot i make sure that i name the files properly i name the variables properly and i extensively use comments that way i get to write very little code and i just have to think about the logic that i want to implement and copilot will help me implement the logic so that should be all for this video thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video i hope you learned something new today